What if I told you that a simple mathematical expression dy over dx ignited a debate that divided the greatest minds of 17th century? Question is simple. Is dy over dx a ratio? The ratio of infinitesimal change in y with infinitesimal change in x? Or it's an operator that is operated on y that gives the differentiation function of y with respect to x? To answer this, we have to go into the history when calculus was first formally introduced to the world, which is itself a controversy between two giants of mathematics, Sir Isaac Newton and Leibniz, that who invented calculus and who stole it from whom. Before we go into the history, let's understand what are the different interpretations of dy over dx. We have Leibniz chain rule for differentiation as dy over dx, which you can multiply and divide by du, and manipulate it as if you're working with quotients, which looks very natural if you think of derivatives as fractions. When Leibniz conceived the notation of dy over dx, it was supposed to be a quotient. It was the quotient of infinitesimal change in y produced by change in x divided by infinitesimal change in x. And similarly, we have inverse function theorem, which tells us that if you know the derivative of a function, then you don't need to calculate the derivative of its inverse function. You can simply take the reciprocal of the derivative of initial function, which is again the most obvious if you think of derivatives as fractions. So where is the problem? There are two major problems and those problems are associated with the formation of calculus using infinitesimals in the usual setting of real numbers. Infinitesimals can't exist in the usual setting of real numbers because real numbers satisfy an important property called the Archimedean property of real numbers, which says that given any positive real number, say epsilon, no matter how small, and given any positive real number, m, no matter how big, there always exists a natural number n such that n times epsilon is greater than m. But an infinitesimal is supposed to be so small that no matter how many times you add up it to itself, it never gets to 1, which contradicts the Archimedean property. And the second problem is, Leibniz defined the tangent to a graph of a function fx at x equal to a by saying, take a point a comma f a, then add infinitesimal amount to a, that is a plus dx, then take the point a plus dx comma f of a plus dx and draw the line through these points. But if there are two different points on a graph, then it's not a tangent. And if it is just one point, because infinitesimals are smaller than every positive real, then how would you define a line from a single point? So calculus was essentially rewritten from ground to top in the following years to avoid these problems. And derivative was no longer a quotient, but it is now a limit. Limit of h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus fx over h. And because we cannot express this limit of a quotient as a quotient of the limits, because both numerator and denominator go to 0, which is an undefined form, so derivative is not a quotient. So how can we use chain rule, inverse function theorem, and manipulations for solving first order first degree differential equations, because all those rules require quotient nature of derivative. It was the year 1666 when Newton at the age of 23 started working on a form of calculus, which he called the method of fluxions. Fluxions is the instantaneous rate of change or gradient of a function or a time varying quantity. Newton started by trying to describe the speed of a falling object. When he did this, he found that the speed of a falling object increases every second. But at the time, there was no existing mathematical explanation for this. However, there were some experimental results from the work of Galileo in 16th century. That time taken to fall by two unequal weights was same and had some vague calculations of the relations between the time and velocity of a falling object. In his experiments, he took an inclined plane and a water clock. When the ball starts moving, he opens the water flow into the bucket and when it reaches the checkpoints and stops, he closes the valve and see how much water has accumulated and wondered if there was any pattern he found. In the first second, and by saying second I mean that the volume of water accumulated in the bucket. In the first second, the ball moves one unit. In the second second, ball moves three units. In third second, ball moves five units. That's all. What falling object has to do with the odd numbers? 
If you know physics, you might know that it is due to Earth's gravity. But there was not much mathematics developed for this. The issue of movement and rate of change was not explored much. So Newton saw a void that was needed to be filled. Newton's approach to calculus was from the side of physical world, trying to explain the instantaneous rate of change in velocities and acceleration with time. However, Newton was not the first. There was a lot of work done on calculus by a lot of scholars all around the world. The first evidence dates back to 1820 BC by ancient Egyptian and Babylonian mathematicians where they could do calculations of areas and volumes but their formulas were given only for concrete numbers. Then there were Greek mathematicians around 400 BC who for the first time used infinitesimals. Democritus was the first person recorded to consider seriously the division of objects into an infinite number of cross sections. Archimedes developed this idea further but it was not until 17th century that method was formalized by Cavalieri as the method of indivisibles and eventually incorporated by Newton into his general framework of integral calculus. Around 4th century, the method of exhaustion was independently invented in China in order to find the area of a circle, in which different figures are used to approximate the area of a circle from outside as well as from inside. Indian mathematics emerged from the subcontinent from 1200 BC until the end of 18th century. Important contributions were made by Aryabhatta, Brahmagupta, Bhaskara II, Varahamahira, and Madhva of Sangam Grama. Evidences suggest that Bhaskara II was acquainted with the ideas of differential calculus and infinitesimals. He was the first person to give up a form of what we today know as the Rolle's theorem. There was a Kerala school of astronomy and mathematics in 14th century, where Madhva of Sangam Grama stated components of calculus such as Taylor series and infinite series. And as a rule of scientific priority, three of the Taylor series are now renamed as Madhva series, which were later independently rediscovered in 17th century by Isaac Newton. But Newton was not alone in the race in 17th century. There were Cavalieri, Torchley, and the most prominent and the controversial one was Leibniz. While Newton started working in 1666 but didn't publish anything until 1687, Leibniz started working on his form of calculus in 1674 and published his first paper in 1684 before Newton. And for the first time in 1696, L'Hopital recognized the similarity in the text of two and published a text that Newton's Principia of 1687 was nearly all about this calculus. This was the first step of the controversy that was yet to come. The controversy which formally began in 1699 and broke out in full force in 1711. Leibniz published his work first but Newton's supporters accused Leibniz of plagiarizing Newton's unpublished ideas. Leibniz claimed that he invented calculus independently of Newton rests on the basis that he published a description of his method some years before Newton printed anything on fluxions, always eluded the discovery as being his own invention demonstrated in his private papers that his development of the idea of calculus was independent of the path taken by Newton. Newton's supporters challenged him on the point 1 and 2 that he saw some of the papers of Newton and obtained fundamental ideas of calculus from those papers. Following years in the life of Leibniz were very miserable, even after his death. His grave went unmarked for 50 years and his contributions were not appreciated, which we will discuss in the next part of this video. Till then, you can subscribe the channel and check out other videos on this channel. Thank you, have a nice day.